So McFarland decided to re-release the Tim Burton Batmobile, and why? Well, for one, it's easy money, two, many collectors missed out on the initial release, and three, the original release had some issues, some inaccuracies, but despite that, it was still nice looking. And speaking of nice looking, this packaging looks really good. We get this nice image of the Keaton Batman that comes with this set because this is the gold label version, but we're not here to gush over the box. We are here to see the differences between between the gold label 1989 version of the Batmobile and the Flash original release Batmobile and along with the Keaton Batman that this set comes with. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and open this up and take a closer look at Batman and the Batmobile. So first we're going to take a look at the Michael Keaton Batman. This is the 1989 suit and this is technically not the first release of this figure because overseas in the Asian markets, the UK and I believe Canada as well, they received the movie pack that has Michael Keaton's so I guess you could say this is the second release version. I don't know if that was intended that way. Either way, first impressions, he looks really nice. My inner Keaton fanboy is just geeking out. However, I'd be a liar if I didn't say that there were some inaccurate accuracies with this figure which we will get to very soon but first let's look at the accessories or I should say the accessory that this figure comes with so yeah the only accessory we get with this Batman is the figure stand so that's kind of disappointing we don't get any interchangeable hands and I believe the movie pack also doesn't have any interchangeable hands correcting me if I'm wrong so that sucks Hopefully, sometime down the road, we can get a single release of the 89 suit with interchangeable hands, maybe a Batarang, the grappling gun. I don't see why not. I mean, it's easy money. It's going to sell out quickly. People are going to scoop it up very fast. At the very least, we could always get a Jokerized version because... Uh, Todd loves his Jokerized Batmans. But yeah, this is all we get. We don't even get a trading card, so that's a bit odd. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to look at is the head sculpt, and I think this has a good likeness to Keaton. I think the mouth is sculpted really well, and even the mask looks really nice. So I'm really happy with pretty much the head part of the head sculpt. I think that's really good. It's pretty spot on to how Keaton looks. Maybe the mask or the cowl could have been a little bit thicker because that 89 suit did have a thicker cowl. Now the issue that we have here is that the aesthetic of the cowl down to the neck does not look good and it's certainly not accurate to how it's supposed to look. Now I will say the original photos, the first promo shots that we saw looked worse. I think it looks better now. I don't know if they retooled it or if it was just a bad photo, but it's still a little bit jarring seeing that. I know there are some collectors out there that would have preferred a one solid piece. It would have been accurate to the suit and it would have looked aesthetically better. Me, I don't mind having that articulation there. In fact, I like it. I just don't think this was executed well. In fact, if we look at the Flash Keaton Batman that came out not too long ago, this also had that added articulation here at the head, which is not accurate to the suit. However, the way the figure looks, it's very streamlined, so it's not as noticeable as the 89 suit. So I like how Todd McFarlane did it with this figure. The sculpting looks really good. You can see it, but it's not as noticeable. It looks good, whereas this one, it's pretty noticeable. Not enough for me to hate the figure. I still am liking it so far it just sucks that we did get that and as I said I'm sure there are people out there that would have preferred not to have articulation there for the sake of aesthetics and accuracy the eyes are painted really well so are the lips so that looks really nice and then looking down at the scallops of the cowl that looks pretty good pretty accurate for the most part I don't see anything that looks terrible looking at the emblem on the chest it is sculpted really well it's got the 89 insignia which is accurate it does look a bit off because you can see this outline around the oval that should be painted black the flash version has that and even the NECA Batman has the outline painted in black. Now you will also notice that the oval is not yellow. It's actually painted in gold, which I didn't realize from the images. I believe the movie collection one has the yellow. This one is gold. So that is another inaccuracy to the actual suit. So I don't know if that's gonna annoy some people. For me, I would have preferred the yellow, but honestly, it doesn't bother me that much. Not because I'm trying to be a McFarlane apologist, 
but because I grew up with the original Kenner figures from the Dark Knight collection, the Batman Returns figures, and those insignias and the belts were all gold. They were not yellow. Now, I don't think this was done intentionally as a throwback to the Kenner line. This was probably just done because it's a gold label figure. So yes, yellow would have been better, but having the gold does look kind of nice. Again, just kind of reminds me of my childhood. And then the bat symbol itself is painted pretty well. Now, the next thing I want to look at is the cape. We do get a soft goods cape with this Batman, which is really cool. I appreciate that. You kind of have to do that since you're going to sit this Batman in the Batmobile and having a plastic cape would kind of hinder that. So it is nice and big. So I appreciate that. I love soft goods capes. I did see it on social media about a month ago, someone complaining about YouTube reviewers always loving the soft good capes from McFarlane Toys and he couldn't understand why. Well, I can't speak for others, but I can speak for myself. I prefer the soft good capes because it helps with posability, helps with posing a figure in some dynamic poses. Plastic cape kind of ruins that a bit. My mentality is if you want a plastic cape, get a statue. So I like the soft good capes. I know with these retail figures, the capes aren't going to be great when they're soft goods. This cape isn't amazing. It isn't the best. I would get a custom cape online and replace this one to make it look better, to, like it, to make it look accurate. But you can't expect an accurate looking pleathery cape for this Keaton Batman. But I still appreciate this fabric cape. It's better than a plastic one. And speaking of the cape, I have noticed some people posing this figure and posting it, pictures of him online with the cape draped back like this. Now this is how he comes straight out of the box. However, if you see the packaging, you'll notice that the cape actually drapes forward. I don't know if people are aware of how to fix that. Again, I've seen people just posing him like this online. So if you wanna know how to do that, all you gotta do is just kinda pull this forward gently. Make sure the cape goes right underneath the points of this scallop right here. Might need to lift it slightly. As I said, pull it forward. Just don't pull too hard so you don't rip it. And there you go. Now the cape is actually draping forward the way it's supposed to, just like in the movie. So again, even though this cape isn't accurate to the film, I like it. I think it still looks good. Much better than a plastic one. Taking a look at the body, for the most part from what I see, it looks pretty accurate. As far as the sculpting of the suit, the muscles look really nice. Now what's not accurate is, of course, the cut right here may break a little bit of the aesthetic of the suit. It's not as bad as the head up here, but this I don't mind. It adds articulation to a suit that prevented mobility. So again, I'm sure there's going to be people out there that's not going to be happy with that. They want something that's 100% accurate. In that case, go get the Mezco one. <laughs> that's going to be as accurate as you'll get in a 6 or 7 inch scale. With a McFarlane version, there's going to be parts of the suit that's going to not be film accurate to do to the added articulation. I don't mind it. I think it looks nice. I can't really complain. Really the only complaint in that department would be the head sculpt, the way that looks on the neck. Body looks nice. Looking at the back, you, you see muscles there, but this part is not accurate with the suit. In fact, if you look here with the NECA version, they did a great job with sculpting the accuracy of the suit on the back. McFarlane did not do that. Not the end of the world, but it still would have been a nice touch to include that. Looking at the arms, I think they're a good size for Keaton. Not too big, not too bulky. It is different than the NECA one. NECA has that added sculpting right here. Again, NECA is pretty good at having good, accurate figures based on the films that they come from. Here is the gauntlet right here. Sculpting looks nice. Good fins right here. Fisted hands on the figure, so at least we get that. It's not like one open hand, one fisted hand. We get two fisted hands, so I'm glad about that. And then look at the belt. Good sculpt work here. Not a yellow belt. This is gold. So again, another inaccurate part of the figure, but I, again, I don't mind. It reminds me of the Kenner figures that I love so much. Here's a look at the back, and then look at the legs. I'm not sure if these are reused parts. They could be, because the sculpting on the suit right here is not 100% accurate, but it's not a big deal to me. I think for the most part, it looks good. The boots look pretty accurate. The sculpting right here on the shin part and right here on the ankle. Here's a look at the foot. That looks nice. Here is the bottom. So, for a figure, if it was released as a single figure, it would be worth 20 bucks. I can't really complain too much about it. I think it does a great job depicting a 1989 Michael Keaton Batman. Not 100% accurate, so if you are looking for that accurate Keaton Batman, you're not going to get it here, but I think for what we get, it looks really good. The articulation, I'm assuming, is great. I'm going to check it real soon, but from what I'm seeing, I'm really liking how this looks. 
All right, so the head, I believe, is on a ball joint, so let's see how great of range we get. So it looks that high up, that far down, so I really like how that looks. In fact, posing him like this would look really nice. Not accurate because the actual suit Michael Keaton could not lift his head up and down or even turn it side to side, but I'm okay with that. I think this looks really cool. Shoulder goes that high up. It rotates all the way around. There is a butterfly joint, which works really well. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, excellent range there. There is a hinge here at the wrist and rotation as well. A ball joint at the upper diaphragm, so he goes that far forward. That far back, he can pivot and twist slightly up there. And then let's see, there's a ball joint here at the waist as well. So crunches that far forward, goes that far back, and twists as well. Legs go that far out, they go that high up. No thigh cut, but usually there is some sort of inner thigh rotation, but they're usually pretty stiff. You could loosen that up a bit with some heat. We get double jointed knees, pretty stiff on mine, but they are there. And then there is a hinge at the ankle, so it goes that high up, that far down. It can swivel and then there should be a pivot but it is very stiff on mine this one is slightly better so i'm gonna have to heat that up and some toe articulation all right here is the mcfarland toys gold label 1989 michael keaton batman next to the mezco one and the neca one and it's interesting to see that the neca one even though that seven inch skill is closer in height with the mezco the McFarlane Toys one does stand much taller than the other two. Then here they are with their capes pulled back. And finally, here is the 89 Keaton Batman next to the Flash Keaton Batman. And these look really nice next to each other. Maybe, hopefully, we can get a Batman Returns really soon. I think there is a rumor that we are getting that. I hope so, because that would look really nice. Now, we've looked over the Keaton Batman. Now let's go over and look at the 89 Batmobile. All right, and now for the main event, that is the 1989 Batmobile. Now, I'm not going to go into full details on every intricacy of the re-released version of the vehicle because it is the same mold as the original release. So if you want a more detailed review and comparison with other 1989 Batmobiles, you can go ahead and click on the icon above and watch the original review. For this next portion, it's just going to focus on the differences between the vehicles and showing a couple Batmans with this gold label version of the 1989 Batmobile. So, first thing, the most obvious difference that we're going to see is that this re-release has a matte finish accurate to the 1989 film, whereas the first release from the Flash movie has this glossy finish on the vehicle. Now, I don't remember if that's how it looked in the Flash movie. That Batmobile only appeared just for a brief period. Now, the glossiness honestly doesn't bother me because I have seen some replica Batmobiles. You can see images online of those replicas at different museums and events, and those ones have this glossy body, so that is kind of nice. I like that. The only problem is that... The canopy does not match the same color as the rest of the vehicle, which makes the glossiness more glaring with that contrast. Whereas on the new re-released version, the gold label has a canopy that matches the rest of the body, so that is a big win in my book. And again, it is more accurate to the movie, so more people are going to prefer this, as do I. Now the inside of the vehicle is pretty much the same on both, same colors, no different paint scheme here. There aren't any different paint colors. Now we do see some slightly different colors on the side of the vehicle. This metal part here, I I'm not going to pretend to know what this is. I'm not really a car guy, but on the gold label version, it is a gun metal, whereas on the first release, it is a straight silver. We also see it on the wheels, it's all black with a gold bat logo. The gold label version doesn't have gold, instead it has silver. Then the back of the Batmobile, pretty much the different color. Colors that we see, the slight silver on those vents, the red lights. They're pretty much the same, just some slight differences that aren't really that noticeable. Really, again, the only noticeable thing is that the Flash version has the glossy finish, whereas the gold label has the matte finish. Now, aside from that, there aren't really any other major differences. 
Again, not much needed to be changed. It was a fantastic mold that Todd McFarlane used. The only other thing that you could say that could be more accurate, or I should say is more accurate, is that if they made this Batmobile a two-seater, but that for me is not a deal breaker. Now, what can be a deal breaker is not being able to fit your Batman in this Batmobile. Luckily enough, the 1989 Batman that we get with this set does fit. You are going to kind of have to move the head slightly to the side or kind of tuck it in in order to get the ears right underneath that roof part. But it does fit in. It does work. And speaking of that, this Batman looks great next to this vehicle, as he should because this Batman goes with this design and having these two next to each other just looks so good but if you're wondering how other 89 batman figures look with this the NECA version looks really nice again he is slightly shorter than the mcfarlane one but i think the height still works with this vehicle and he fits perfectly in the car and you don't have to finagle the head so that is a big plus and then the mezco one being shorter than the two does look very good next to this vehicle and of of course, because it is shorter, it is going to fit perfectly in the car. So if you want to do some cool shots with a more accurate looking Batman, the NECA and the Mezco one looks fantastic next to this. And overall, this vehicle and the Batman is fantastic. I know my original review, I said that you needed that vehicle if you were a Batman fan. It was a must-have. I still stand by that because it is a great release by McFarlane Toys. It was just inaccurate. Again, the glossiness didn't bother me. The canopy not being the same color did, so there were some flaws with that initial release. This one, though, I don't really see anything wrong with this vehicle. Todd McFarlane corrected the mistakes, and it looks beautiful. Now, I have heard some people complain online saying that, oh, Todd McFarlane did this on purpose so he can re-release this car. Maybe. I I'm not going to pretend that I know... Todd McFarlane and what goes on in his head but honestly if he wants to re-release this vehicle a few more times I say go for it because I'm pretty sure they're gonna sell out each time there are plenty of collectors out there that missed out on this pre-order it sold out really fast so if he wants to re-release this set or re-release the vehicle again go ahead I wouldn't complain Hell, give us a camo attack version, like from the Batman Returns Kenner line. That would be cool. I'm pretty sure he would do a Jokerized Batmobile. He loves doing Jokerized figures. And speaking of figures, the figure that comes with this set is really good. It's not perfect. It's not 100% accurate. But honestly, it doesn't bother me because that added articulation just makes posing this Batman a lot more fun. And not only that, but for a quote-unquote mass retail figure, I think it just works perfectly. And I say that, yes, it's not mass retail. It is an Amazon exclusive. It's the only way to get it other than that Batman movie collection set. Now, it would be nice if McFarlane Toys decided to do an 89 wave and re-release this figure with some accessories, some interchangeable hands, and some Batman. Batarangs. Again, as of this recording, I don't know if that's going to happen, but that would be nice. I don't see why you wouldn't, because again, that would sell out quickly. Hell, you can even give us a Jokerized Keaton Batman. So bottom line, with the Batman figure, the added articulation doesn't bother me. Yeah, it kind of makes the suit a little bit inaccurate, especially with the cowl, but it's not the end of the world. I still think it's executed pretty well, and the vehicle is executed even better. So if I recommended the original release, I am definitely recommending this one. It is a must-have for any Batman collector out there. The only sucky thing is if you missed out on the pre-order, then you're going to have to pay the aftermarket price, which honestly sucks. I say don't spend too much. It's none of my business how you want to spend your money. I personally wouldn't spend over 150 on this set, and even then, that might be too much for some people, considering that this set pretty much was 80 bucks. But here's hoping that we get another release, so that way more collectors can get their hands on this at a reasonable, affordable price. I am mostly a wrestling channel, but I do love reviewing McFarlane toy figures every now and then, especially when it's Batman. So go ahead, show me love on this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.